to Happy Valley on a Wednesday night for a nine race program. Our feature race being race number six, the Volunteers Challenge Cup. Really strong end to the program as well with a couple of class twos. Very warm welcome to Racing to Win. I'm Andrew Lejeune, joined here in the studio by our former analyst Paul Lally and race caller Tom Wood as well. Tom, it is. We've got some real class acts, a really good sprint race at the end of the program. Yeah, the, the final two races, Andrew, certainly are the, the best of them. The, the class two races, the 1200 metre race. Uh, Gentle Breeze trying 1200 metres again. Mr. Croissant trying Happy Valley uh, for the first time. A few other nice runners there, loving a boom, amazing star who's won by a total of 10 lengths in his last two starts and then a good race over 1,650 metres uh, to round out the day with a couple of newcomers in it as well. well we've got some newcomers, we've got a jackpot, the 16 million one went off the TT on uh, on Monday Paul, we've got another one on Wednesday night. Yeah, plenty of people got the one on uh, Monday so uh, really good uh, result there for if you managed to get it, so well done, I'm sure you're still celebrating there. There are 1.1 million for the triple trio, that's the jackpot coming up for this one, uh, expecting to get up to 3 million for a single winning a $10 unit. So quick backup, but uh, more opportunities to make some more money. Certainly are, yeah, and there's plenty to get through as well with the nine races on the programs. We'll launch uh, straight into it, looking back on our Monday uh, program first with our racing review. So this was the big Chinese New Year race day at Sha Tin with 11 races on the program. Two, well, there's three trophy races, uh, really. The first of them, though, the Group 3, the Centenary Vars with Exultant. Big weight on his back. Was enough to stop him, though? No, it wasn't at all. £133 um, lo loomed up here in the, the straight, took over at about the 250 metres. Dark Dream had set up a, a fairly solid tempo uh, throughout. You could see Eagle Way getting a bit of a check there. Great run from the, the second horse, who was well out of the handicaps. Uh, uh, Glorious Dragon. The other horse that was out of the handicaps there was uh, Shifano uh, holding on to a fourth place, but it was a, a terrific e effort, effort in the end from uh, Exultant. Yeah, too big, too strong, wasn't he? Mm. The weight well, it didn't uh, stop him, and away he went. Shifano and uh, Glorious Dragon. A little bit of a uh, sort of a barging match down the straight there, a little bit. I don't think it didn't affect the result, but um, it was still a good run, as you mentioned, from those horses out of the handicap. Yeah, Eagle Way was uh, was better there as yeah, well. But Exalted was... might now press on to Dubai. That's the call from Tony Cruz. This was the first leg of the four year old series, uh, the classic uh, mile. Golden 60, Beauty Legacy, and more than this, dominated the market. Golden 60 dominated the racer. Gee, what a good win from this horse. He's got that really good turn of foot, and he put it to bed pretty early. Uh, from a derby point of view, thought it was a good run from more than this once again. He's got back and he, he looked a little bit uh, lazy in the race. But once he gets going in the straight, we know he's got a good finish and he finished off once again. He's not... He sort of bred to be a mile more than this, but the way he races, you think the 2,000 isn't going to be a problem. No, he hit the line really strongly. Um, Golden 68 uh, wins now from his nine starts. I don't know if the, the disappointing factor out of the race maybe was Beauty Legacy because he just didn't quite let down uh, like mm. we might, uh, might have thought he would have over the, the final stages there. Yeah, Joe had pointed out even before the race saying the horse was still learning. He was a little bit keen in the early stages as well. So excuses of him, but Francis Lloyd trained the 1-2, a marvellous achievement there, and John Side has... Third and fourth, so that was uh, the classic mile, and uh, we'll see what happens next. But as far as I'm aware, they all press on now to the Cup. That will be the next uh, engagement in February. So as far as the ratings were concerned, um, out of the the Monday program on the undercard, we saw a couple of nice wins. War of Courage got his head in front. Wellington was super perfect match and super wealthy win again. Wellington was the one they crunched as well from around about 18s before a post time. Sort of got down to around about that to 13 or 14 dollar mark, and then one hit bang 5.9. Yeah, a lot of money for him, wasn't he? One one perfect match. Uh, what are they going to do with him? I mean, it's yeah. onwards and upwards for this horse as well. He's uh, he's winning nicely. They, they do have a Derby nomination for him, but uh, look, I don't think he's going to get there, and they're no. probably not going to go to the Classic Cup either. Uh, no. 1,800 metres, I think, would stretch a horse like him. All right, well, it might be the mile next for him. Does hold that Derby entry. They were the big winners uh, on the day. Then we'll see if we can find some more with our horses to follow. All right, what have you got for us, uh, Paul? The number of first starters you found as one? Yeah, Dragon Pride. Now, he was an emergency going into this race. He managed to get a start. You can see him right out the back there in, in the orange. He's very green, this horse. He did run around a little bit, but I thought he finished off the race really nicely. He finished sixth in the end, but uh, the, the best part of this race is when he did flatten out over this last sort of 100 metres in particular, and the way he hit the line, I think it's good. And once he steps up to uh, 1,200 metres, I think we're going to see uh, a nice race horse. It was a good... Very good debut from him. 
So he was. Eternal Harvest, there was a bit of money for him on debut as well. He played up in the mm. stalls, didn't he? So yeah. he'll be back to the Barrows, but um, look out for him. Uh, Tom? I went with uh, Happy Tango in uh, one of the earlier races, mid-programme, race number six. Um, he did run eighth in this uh, race over the 1,400 metres. It was at Class 4 level. This was the race that great treasure and Tony Picone stormed down the outside to When You can see him in the red cap there, sort of at this point behind uh, King Dragon. Uh, not far away from Sam's Love, who uh, accelerated late in the race as well. But I didn't think it was a bad effort from him. He'd just been trialling moderately coming into this, but he certainly was doing his best work late. May have got tightened up a little bit there over the final stage, but it uh, wasn't a bad run first up. No, and a super effort. Tony Picone kind of dropped his stick there, so he was using his hands, <laughs> his left hand. Then he actually put that down and used his right hand as well in the closing stage. A super ride from Tony. Uh, Lobo's legend uh, for me. Now, this horse is... Been here for a couple of seasons now, might be looking maybe a little bit exposed. He's a grade one winner in South Africa before he arrived. Uh, this race, Assimilate wins the race, who's down there on the rail. There's a super effort from him and Zach Purton uh, in the blue blinkers there. But you can just see from a long way back under Sylvester de Sosa, gets going and makes up some good ground. Horse on the outside there as well, um, Seattle Choice in the, uh, the yellow sleeves. He was a, it was a tough run from him. The grey actually racing fighter. You can see Lobo's legend got tightened mm. up a little bit there late. There's probably a few to come out of that race. Yeah, it looks like a nice race that one and uh, Simulate did get the best run on the inside. It was a good ride from Zach. He just didn't panic and bang. He was due to. He, yeah, was. he was. All right, and he just beaten in a photo finish last time out. So those are the horses to follow. Hopefully they can uh, bring some returns in the not too distant uh, future. Moving on to Happy Valley then on a Wednesday night. The first thing to take note of is that surrealism isn't going round in race number six, uh, is replaced by Nam Jong Plus, and that is the feature race, the Volunteers Challenge Cup, which is a class three contest over the 1650. We're on the B course for our 40th meeting of the season and nine races. First race at 6.45, which is a class four over the 1200 metres, headed by Fairy Twins, drops back into class four companies, a two-time winner and a two-time course and distance winner as well. Fortune and Happiness, three-time win on the trip. They've all been on the dirt, though, at Chartin. Happy Valley first time. Shoes on a last start course and distance winner. Down to super winner, who was a beaten favourite um, last time out behind Very Sweets. Orange Ever Strong comes up in class, class, a last start winner. Again on the dirt, though. And UW Brother, who switches back to Happy Valley after finishing fourth at Chartin on his last two starts. He gets the inside gate. Shusong and Speedy Missile are the horses that have been up at uh, Chung Fa within the last 30 days, Tom. Having a look at the pace here, should be good super winner on the backup from uh, last Wednesday night when he wasn't able to lead on that occasion. He got into a little bit of trouble uh, last start, uh, so he's on the quick backup super winner. Fortune Happiness will try and spear across from out wide, but we've seen the best of him certainly on the all weather. He tries Happy Valley for the first time. UW Brother can race handy, as too can uh, Shusong, who was able to uh, win last time out. Uh, you see Destin Jewellery back there. Had he drawn a better gate, he probably would have been a bit closer. Uh, Fairy Twins is the one we're looking at here. He's the one closest to us. I thought it was a nice piece of work from him. Uh, the horse does go pretty well. He's dropping into Class 4, and he's uh, really well rated with a good draw. So I think he'll get his opportunity in this. Shushin uh, won nicely at his last start. Uh, Zach Purton aboard from Barrow number 2. So uh, the penny's dropped for him. Uh, he, this was his first win last start from his uh, 16 starts so far here in Hong Kong. And the other one here is a super winner. Now, he he didn't get to the front last time. He had very sweet orange in the race. He's very speedy. We did go on and win it. But, look, he's un under a reasonable hold, and I think he's probably going to get his opportunity here because there's not as much strong pace there. I don't know if he always wears those uh, bungees and the, the track work there, but they're obviously just trying to drop his head because he does mm, carry yeah. it rather awkwardly. OK, all right, that's a super winner. Let's start off with uh, UW Brother and uh, Destin Jewelry will start off with. And this is two starts back for, uh, for UW Brother. Uh, two starts back for Destin Jewelry actually, as well, finishing fourth and seventh behind Fortune Brilliant. Yeah, so they've both had a, a run since then. UW Brother was uh, fourth and uh, Destin Jewelry uh, was uh, tenth. Um, look, I think he's probably going to be better suited, UW Brother, when he gets to a, a class drop. Uh, gate one, Dylan Moe for uh, me. I'm, I'm happy to just uh, leave him out this time round. Destin Jewelry, I'd be having him on a minor line. Yeah, Destin Jewelry, he's, he's coming to Happy Valley for the first time, so he's in race there. Yeah, UW Brothers on that rating of 41. Mm. He's always a good track worker, but he always disappoints on race day. The penny's slowly starting to drop. He has made some improvement. Yeah. All right, Fortune Happiness, the next one we have a look at. Um, now, nothing wrong with this um, form so far this uh, season with three wins from four starts, but... They've all been here on the dirt. Yeah, so he's another one coming to Happy Valley for the first time. He's drawn barrier 12 as well. He's got Super Winner underneath him, and I think Super Winner can get to the fence before Fortune Happiness. So I don't know where he's going to end up in the run, actually, Fortune Happiness. He's got a bit of pace, but um, yeah, I'm happy to let him go from 12. 
Um, I haven't put them in either. Uh, Fortune, happiness, just happy valley first time. Wide store, we've seen the best of them on the all-weather, so uh, maybe that's where he's best suited at this stage. All right, well, Shuson does have some winning form here at Happy Valley. Last time out over course and distance. Uh, he managed to do this from barrier 12 as well. He gets barrier 2 this time. Yeah, so he's got a, a much better draw to work with this time round. Uh, Zach Purton stays uh, with him. He won this race by half the length on Golden Glory, who goes round in uh, one of the earlier races on the programme. So he'd done a little bit of work last time out. I think he mapped reasonably well here to potentially sort of end up one back, one out. It was a decent effort from him. Yeah, he's one of the major chances for me because he's going to get an opportunity. I don't think this is any stronger than that no. race he just won. All right, and the added uh, bonus of the, the inside gate as well. Speedy Missile then up at um, Chung Fa. We haven't seen him since Boxing Day here behind Victory Power. Yeah, the hood's come off him and they put the blinkers on for the first time. He's drawn OK and he was a little bit unlucky at his last start at Happy Valley. He just sort of got held up at a time... Look, this was a very, very, very soft trial. They just weren't pushed out at all. Um, he, I mean, he did what he had to do, but I still want to see him do it on race day. I'm going to tip him on top here. I didn't mind the trial. Uh, the blinkers were on there. Matthew Chadwick rode him. Matthew Chadwick rides here for Jimmy Ting. Uh, last time out, he was at 14 to 1 in the market, beaten 3.5 behind Victory Power. So in a race that doesn't have a lot of depth to it, I thought he was a chance. I love the fact you're cautious. Yeah, I don't want to see on Tom's he's on top for me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boots and all. Shoes on uh, the favourite Paul, what do you think, though? Well, I've got a risky proposition on top as well. Super winner. I, I, look, he's once the penny drops for him, he's going to start winning them. But he's um, he does a lot of things wrong. I think he'll, even though he's drawn wide, he's, he'll get his opportunity because there's not as much pace underneath him as there was last start. So... We'll give him the opportunity to beat Shusan, who will get a nice run. Ferry Twins, now he's the handicapper pick. He's won off a rating of 72. He's down to 58 now and drops into class four. And uh, Galaxy Emperor, I did make him the long shot last time. He ran OK over 1,000. He steps up to 1,200. I just didn't want to completely give up on him because there is something there with this horse. 8316. It's one of those races I'm certainly not interested in 2.2 about Shusan. I'm definitely not interested in 6.1 around UW Brothers. So some value with the speedy missile here at 11 and 3.4 off the back of a decent trial. Blinkers on first time, drawn well enough, not beaten overly far in his last few runs. So he's on top to beat three Shusan. Four Melbourne Hall probably deserves another chance. He went round at 14 to 1 last time out. That was beaten six lengths by undefeated and super winner. Uh, he goes in, but he is risky. 11, 3, 4 and 8. Yeah, I'm interested by Melbourne Hall as well because his, his run first up at Happy Valley was quite mm. good, but it was just too bad to be true last time at Shartin. So uh, we'll see at that sort of price, though, 30 and 12 a place. He looks okay. All right, that's the first.